In most glioma cases, inevitably, you will see brain shift. But with the ultrasound, you are able to overcome that. I am Dr. Michael Bartos. I'm a neurosurgeon at the University Hospital in Hradec Králové. The case we did today was a 65-year-old uh, lady who had a tumor in the um, retrocentral area on the uh, left side. In this case, high-grade glioma. We use navigated ultrasound at our institution routinely and the main indication is resection control to make sure that we've done a radical resection. So the workflow with navigated ultrasound is not much different to the usual workflow without ultrasound. We just have the ultrasound integrated with the navigation system. The probes are used in a sterile fashion um, and we use it repeatedly during the resection to check on um, any residual tumour. The benefit of navigated 2D ultrasound is in that you have a fusion image. The real-time ultrasound image is overlaid over the pre-op MRI data. We're used to looking at images in orthogonal planes on MRI, meaning axial, coronal and sagittal. Any tangential plane between those planes gets difficult. But by overlaying the ultrasound over the MRI, we're able to interpret these planes much better. Another thing is that um, the ultrasound is a relatively narrow view compared to the entire MRI. It's like having flaps on your eyes. So if you see the surrounding image around that sector of ultrasound image, you get the greater picture and you're able to orientate yourself much better. The 2D scans are easy to use in that you just put the probe on the area of interest and you see an image immediately. It's very um, efficient, it's not time consuming and there are many points during the surgery where you just reach a point where you're not quite sure and you need to check. The 3D um, image requires an acquisition so that means gaining a number of slices up to 500 slices and doing a 3D reconstruction from that. Once you have the reconstruction, you can navigate within that volume using your pointer. So if you need to locate a certain structure within that volume with high precision, you can use the pointer to do that. And you don't need to have the probe in, in the other hand. And it's real-time data. So at this stage, when you're looking for resection control at the end, you really need to have a clean cavity, as little blood and coagulum and detritus as possible, because all that is gonna um, de degrade the image and cause artifact. So this is when you really need to keep um, the cavity clean and flush it with water continuously. And the, the most important thing is at this stage, there's so much shift, you can't trust the, the, the pre-op MRI at all anymore. So this is giving you real-time data to navigate within. I just find that the workflow with this is very easy and it doesn't slow me down in any way um, and it's friendly with any position really. In any sort of point of uncertainty I can do a check um, as many times as I like. Um, I definitely like that sense of depth which looking at the bottom of the cavity you really don't know how far you are away from some certain structure like a ventricle. As you can see on the images, um, it was clearly identifiable where the residual tumour is. And most of all, at the end of the resection, we were able to confirm that there is no residual tumour left. That leaves me with much greater confidence after the surgery. And the post-op MRI is not a surprise.